Welcome to Milford Hall Cricket Club on a beautiful spring morning in April and uh, I would like to say a big thank you to Milford Hall Cricket Club for letting us come here today to show you our Alec Sterling 51 mower. My name is Austin Jarrett and I'm from Alec Mowers. The Sterling 51 is uh, one of our very latest products and I wanted to share with you actually how this mower is now doing very well within the cricket wicket market. Uh, the main reasons it's doing so well is because this is one of our, what we would call a mass produced product rather than our big heavy professional machines which are made in lower quantities. And that mass production allows us to hit a really attractive price point on what is a very accurate machine and is also battery powered. So the Sterling 51, 20 inch wide machine, perfect for a wicket. The machine is really precise and I want to be talking to you about that. It's very adjustable. We get a lot of functionality out of this machine because it does more than just mow. Alit have been producing mowers for over 50 years and the very first mowers that Reg Alit and Roy Alit's son came up with were specifically for the cricket market. So we have a very long history in these cricket mowers. The other thing is there's a very big move towards electric on our mowers now. Um, the, the battery power drive for a cylinder mower we feel now is just really appropriate and it, it really does give a lot of advantages. So you may care about the environment and using battery power on your mower uh, is zero emissions at the point of use of course. Depends where you're getting your electricity from, of course, in terms of it being absolutely zero, but this is a lot better both for the environment locally and of course for the operator that we're not uh, blowing exhaust fumes out. The machine is really quiet and that may play a part from your location and the noise if you've got to, uh, your cricket ground is in, in within a built up area that really your neighbours will not be able to hear this mower operating and that gives you a much wider range of hours that you can operate without disturbing the neighbourhood. Because of the electric power we also get uh, at the design stage the opportunity to make this machine much more controllable than you're used to with your old petrol engine machines and I'll be talking to you about the controllable and the adjustable of this machine and likewise safety we can add safety features into the product as well which is very easy to do with electric power. We're using the Ego 56 volt as the platform for this machine these batteries are really readily available they're going to be on the market for a long time and they're available in lots of different sizes and we sell this machine primarily with the 5 amp hour battery and also the 10 amp hour battery and that will mow easily all of these uh, wickets that we have behind us right now if that's what you need to do. Uh, look up Ego 56 volt battery platform and you'll see lots of satisfied customers and they really are uh, putting a lot of investment into keeping these batteries cool and making sure that they're, they're really price advantaged so that we can sell this package very cost effectively. The cost of operation of a battery powered mower as well without oils and lubrication and spark plugs means that the cost of maintenance over the life of the machine is reduced too. Think about petrol on the old machines that you've got in your shed right now. Where are you storing the petrol? The risks of that. Uh, I know every time I'm the one that goes to the petrol can it's always empty so it ends up being my turn to go down to the petrol station for the refill and what I've got to do a petty cash reclaim and all the other things that go with that. Whereas with this battery, even just with the charger in the clubhouse, I've set myself full ready to go mowing as soon as this is charged. And even this battery here is taking about 90 minutes to recharge and will probably give me an hour, an hour and a half worth of mowing depending on what I'm doing um, with that. 
The battery's also got some nice features. So when I press the button here, I can see that this battery is fully charged by the lights. And once that battery is slipped into the mower, then from my operating position, I can see direct from the battery how much charge I have left within that mower. One of the big things about this mower is the affordability of it and I'm going to be comparing it with the, the bigger old traditional mowers that you would use uh, uh, later in terms of what you get for your money. But the other thing about this particularly is the fact that it's really lightweight machine. And that might be important for a number of reasons, but I, I know certainly we rely on the fantastic volunteers in the village cricket uh, business. And uh, just this lighter weight machine is so much easier to handle, is easier to get back into the shed or the container of the ramps. It's just easier to move around. Uh, and, that, and that has a particular advantage, I think, for the average user in, in the club cricket market. A lot of the advantages of more mass-produced mowers as well is that we can invest more in, in really important area of the interface between the operator and the mower. And we're really proud of the handlebar setup on, on this machine uh, for several reasons. So to start with, what I'm able to do is I have really good adjustment on these handlebars. By moving this lever here, I have a number of positions here that I can set the mower to. I like it at this higher position, but if I'm a lower operator, then I can lower it down into different positions. On top of that, uh, we have uh, a tromboning system as well, and we are able to make this so that you can use this at a variety of different heights, and this just locks off cleanly here as well. So that's great from the operator and from the height perspective. Uh, in terms of the usability on the handlebar set, uh, this is really comfortable. I, I feel that the, the natural hand position when you lift your hands up is exactly right to grab the handles. And then from here, I've got uh, simply my cylinder engagement, which is a two-stage safety system. Press the button in the middle and then pull the bail bar. For the drive to the rear roller, I have two thumb buttons on the handlebar here. I can use either one and just by simply pressing that, the mower is driven forward. From this position, I get good visibility. And when I have the handlebars at this higher position, I get good visibility of the cutting cylinder, which helps me on my overlap too. Uh, and just that we're not touching any cold steel on this handlebar setup either. I can vary the forward speed depending on the operation or the operator's preferred speed. Uh, and we have what we call here a rotor shift. And simply by rotating the rotor shift, I get an increased speed and I've got nine steps of speed. So I can use it really, really slow if I was doing cultivation or brushing, or I can speed it right up if I'm doing mowing of a much larger area. Another thing our design engineers paid particular attention to was the height control. And within cricket, where you're changing the height of cut very regularly as you're mowing your variety of, of stages of strips, then being able to adjust the height of cut reliably and accurately and know what the height of cut is, is, is really important. And we have a single point of adjustment for the height of cut on the Sterling 51. We call it the height right, and what you've got is a very clear millimetre scale on the side to tell you what your height of cut is. There is a second scale if you're going to be using the cultivation cartridges, which we're going to talk about later. There's a, because they are a different diameter to the cutting reel, then we use a different scale for cultivations on the other side. But I can simply change the height of cut. I'm set at 25 millimetres now, and I'm literally just going to adjust that really accurately down to 20 millimeters now. And I can be really assured that that's gonna be my height of cut. I can take this mower right down so I can drop the bottom blade right to the ground and I can take the height of cut up to as high as 50 millimeters. So that's a really, uh, really good range of heights of cut on this mower.
Uh, levelness of surface and not disturbing the surface. I know, I know we're rolling really heavily uh, compared with all other sports in cricket on the wicket itself, but uh, the rear roller is an important part of the height control and the height consistency. And I can just show you the rear roller on this machine. I'll have always pay particular attention to that. And because this is an electric machine, I don't have to worry about the spillage of the fuel when I do this. But the rear roller on this is a split rear roller, 50-50, and there's a differential drive within this. That always helps with straight lining because I can steer the machine more easily if the two halves of the roller can travel at different speeds. And of course it helps as well when I'm turning around that a single roller would just scuff the turf and wear the turf so much more when I'm turning around. In addition to that, what we've incorporated into the Sterling is our glide drive system. So what you'll notice is when I'm turning this rear roller like so, that I'm not turning the electric motor and that makes this machine really light to pull backwards and push forwards if I want to do that instead of using the drive system. Uh, and all of that combined just again helps to make this machine so much easier to use than a traditional heavier machine. Going to the front of the machine we're looking at the front roller. This is steel with a pair of bearings. We do have an adjustable scraper as well, and in some conditions that may be useful to you. And one of the things I really like about the Sterling is there is this adjustable rake just behind the front roller. So even if you buy this just in a mowing format, then what you're able to do is to adjust the, uh, the height of the comb uh, with a 13 millimeter spanner. And so that when we're getting low on the mowing, the leaves that are lying down, we can start to, to comb those so they appear upright to the bottom blade. We started from the ground up on the redesign of the grass box with this um, quite unconventional grass box for a cylinder mower. Uh, it's a steel frame with perforated material. And the reason we went for the perforated material was, firstly, it makes the whole grass box really light and easy to empty. Uh, but the flow of air in order to get great grass box fill when we're blowing clippings or debris during cultivations up into this nice sized grass box, then the air can separate and go out through the mesh and the debris stays within rather than having to blow back out at the front all over the mower. So that, that's really achieved that very nicely and this just clips onto the framework of the mower like so. One of the really big game changers with the Sterling, I said at the beginning, was that this is not just a mower. We're going to be able to carry out a whole load of tasks in order to keep our strips absolutely to the finest and truest quality. And that's about the interchangeable cartridge. The Sterling mower comes as standard, included in the price, a six bladed cylinder. This does a really nice fine cut. But the big advantage of this system is that I can pull this cartridge out really easily. I just lift these two locking devices. This is the drive to the mower and I just need to release that and then that enables me to pull our mowing cylinder out really quickly. If I then decide that I want to go brushing then I take the brush cartridge and I just insert that back into the machine. I lock it off and then I'm able to get that ready to go. And then I'm literally ready to drive this machine uh, and do the next task. All I need to do is to adjust my height of cut on the height right system and I'm ready to go. So this makes the whole system really, really versatile. And I'm gonna talk through the range of cartridges that we have to complete the other tasks. So to start with, we have the brush cartridge uh, and the brush cartridge is really useful for clearing the debris off the strip so that we can allow the soil to, uh, uh, to wet or dry as we manage. Uh, and we need to stand the grasses upright as well to be able to clip those off every time that we mow. 
So we'll show you this in action because this is one of the most useful cartridges for wicket maintenance. So we're going to give this strip a quick mow at four millimeters high. That's what this club likes to do. And before I do that, I'm just going to use the brush here and use it in two directions. One, to get the grass standing upright and also to fetch out some of the dead debris as well to expose the soil. The next one is the cartridge that you must order with this machine for wicket mowing and that is the 10 bladed mowing cylinder. So I'm going to take the brush out and this is our 10 bladed cylinder here. 10 bladed gives us obviously a higher clip rate which at lower heights is really important. So this is the one that you're going to be using most of the time for your mowing and there we are that is now changed. I can lower the height of cut with this particular cartridge down to two and a half millimeters because that is the thickness of the blade. Uh, the, we've made the blade system on this uh, really rigid uh, so we'll get great quality cutting and we'll also get ease of adjustment as well and ease of setting. But one of the advantages of being able to take this cylinder out when I need to is for instance, if I do hit a stone or if I find that I'm in a situation where the blades are starting to go dull, then I'm able to backlap the cylinder as I need to. Uh, at the end here, I can use a 24 millimeter socket on the end of an electric power drill and I can rotate the cylinder in reverse and apply backlapping paste just to put a really nice sharp edge back on the mower for clean cutting. We have other videos which you'll be able to see where it shows you how to backlap one of these units. For this sports mower, the 10 bladed cylinder where we are wanting to mow low, we've just changed the blade angle ever so slightly here and just feathered it off at the front so that we are able to achieve the lower heights of cut that you may decide that you need at any point when you're shaving the wicket down. A particular favourite of mine for general purpose work is the spring tined scarifier. Uh, again, this really uh, will go down into the sward, especially on the square where you may be maintaining at 12 millimetres and you need to be keeping control of the thatch before shaving down. This really does help keep it a healthy sward. If you've got leaves and other debris as well that are blowing on, then this really does pick up, collect. When you're using all of these cultivation cartridges, one of the really nice things is, of course, that you have the grass box on and you're collecting everything up as you go. Verticut, we're getting into more serious cultivation. You can see a closer spaced steel blade, not unlike a saw blade, and this allows us uh, the option to do other types of maintenance. And you may use it if you want to disrupt the, service, uh, the surface of the uh, wicket before maybe a light overseeding then this will really help as well just give uh, give the seed somewhere to go uh, to get germinating more quickly we get continuously more aggressive and now you're looking at a wider spacing blade here we call this the dethatcher unit and this is rotating with a hook shaped blade and is much more aggressive and you you need to be careful about the times that you use this because you can really disrupt the soil and the depths that we're able to reach with this are around 15 millimeters if we need to but of course you can set it very quickly 
lift it out of the ground and almost do a verticutting job without having to disturb the soil surface. And finally, a really light aerator. Uh, this has no drive on the end uh, and that is because this just simply is pushed along by the rear roller and these spikes go in the ground just to allow irrigation water to go into the surface. Interchangeable cartridges also allow me to easily just take my cylinder out and I can put this in the boot of the car and take it for servicing or proper regrind sharpening. And of course that's so much more available if you don't have to take the whole mower for a regrind. I can also have a spare unit if I wanted to, keep one sharp and have the other one for sharpening just to give additional uh, uh, versatility, especially if your location is a long way away from the nearest people that can help you with a regrind. So to wrap up now, we've actually brought in one of our heavy duty uh, mowers uh, for a comparison. So what Alit are doing by offering you now a 20 inch battery electric version with all the options and, and advantages that you've got uh, with this mower, uh, you also need to understand that the 20 inch equivalent of the Alit professional offering and also all of our competitors that are all around this sort of price, very similar prices to this because they are heavy duty machines that we've all grown to, to love. But the Sterling now offers you a price point which is literally half the price with actually easier use because the machine is lighter and 20 inch sterling, sterling 51 is coming in at about 58 kilograms and a 20 inch interchangeable cartridge in our professional range is coming in at something like 120 kilograms so it's literally half the weight. Also with a battery on this machine uh, and an empty fuel tank on this when you're buying these machines new this is half the price of the professional machine. So uh, what are we saying? What, what are your choices? I, I need to be clear with you, and we like to be frank uh, at Alit, that if you've got the budget, then go for a professional machine. These professional machines in a cricket environment are, are not unknown, and it's quite regular, in fact, that they'll be replaced every 15 to 20 years. And to be clear, the Sterling is built to a lighter duty. The fact that this has got twice as much steel in it as this machine actually contributes towards the strength, the rigidity and the accuracy of these professional products. Uh, so this machine is not going to last in the same, uh, for the same time as this machine, half the price. So you need to make uh, some decisions on actually will this, do, will this machine do because it's going to do all the accuracy that you want plus all the tasks. and. In a, in a much easier way because the machine's lighter. This machine's gonna last you instead an awful long time. So think about that duty. And in fact, is half the cost important if you have the budget for that because this machine is going to last so long, the actual cost of ownership per year is, is actually uh, probably equivalent. But if money is no object, and I know in a club environment that would be extremely unusual, uh, then professional product is your choice. Please consult with your users and which ones uh, you're going to be able to get more volunteers if the machine is easier to use and easier to adjust. And you're going to get people to do more tasks because it's so much easier to change the cartridge over to the brush or the scarifier cartridge, for instance, just in seconds uh, to be able to change it over to do another task. You are much more likely to do that task. So I'm not going to tell you what to do. Your own circumstances are going to determine which way that you want to go. But uh, I think you'll find that the Sterling offers a new level of excellence in cylinder mowing on cricket strips that, that has not been available to you before at the price that this is.